Good afternoon. It's 4 o'clock, calling the recreation meeting to order. We have a pretty full agenda today. We're going to start off with, we have two guests here today, Mary Ann Bradley and Brian Mickelson. They are both candidates for the open position on this committee. As you may recall, Janet had to, um, she made the personal decision to step away, and so we would like to fill that vacancy with one of them, and we'll let them go first. After that, we'll move into the amenity reports. Then there'll be a conversation regarding recreation um, budgets for 2023, and then the staff reports. Mary Ann, would you like to come up first? Thank you. Um, my interest in the committee, committee basically stem from running for the board and so many people asking me to run for the recreation committee. I've lived in the area for just a little bit over a year. My husband is retiring in six months in about 20 days. Um, he probably knows the hours and minutes. And we were really looking forward to getting our house finally built. It's in the process right now. What the reason why I, the other reason why I'm interested and am open to applying for this position is that I really love the outdoors. I grew up in the mountains of Utah and I love to hike, I love to fish, I love to, I love to ride horses, I love yoga. There's one thing that you guys have that I haven't tried yet and that's the pickleball. I'm really looking forward to trying that out, but I, I love to water ski. I grew up water skiing and I just love the outdoors. So that's part of my love for the recreation committee and my desire for it besides people asking me to come forward and apply for it. Anything else that you'd like to know about me besides what I like about this area? I love, I mean, I love the area. I love where we're building. It's just, it's a beautiful area. But with the supply chain, of course, it slowed things way down. Um, and maybe one more thing you want to know about me is I am a transformational coach. I work from home and I love my job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mary Ann. We appreciate it. Brian, you want to come up? Brian Mickelson, thank you. Hello, my name is Brian Michelson. There's a couple of you here that might know me. Uh, yes, the reason that, that uh, I uh, was interested in filling the position on the, on the rec committee is that, uh, uh, like Mary Ann, I myself am a, a huge outdoorsman. Uh, hiking is one of my main focuses. I'm an avid kayaker slash kayak racer. Uh, I enjoy bicycling. Uh, being outside in general, I have a, uh, a big history. I'm currently a home inspector. Uh, I have a lot of experience in the trades. Uh, I used to do a lot of remodeling out here in Bella Vista years ago. Uh, about uh, eight years I remodeled out here. So. Uh, that's some things, some talents that I could bring to the position as far as, as uh, overall, you know, checking on the amenities, uh, determining if something needs to be done, not done, uh, safety issues uh, that are there, which of course are paramount. You want to get those things fixed right away. Uh, so there again, like Marianne, I do, I enjoy the outdoors. I uh, spend a lot of my time outdoors, uh, even when it's hot like this. Uh, and uh, the past experiences that I could uh, could bring as far as uh, the trades and uh, being a home inspector, having an eye for things that need to be taken care of, especially safety issues. Uh, I have a, I'm obviously not a young man, I have a, a large history of experiences that I could bring to the position and uh, I just hope that you'll consider me for it and if not this time, maybe next time. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Awesome. Thank you both for being here, as, as I told you guys, and so everyone can hear it. Um, the committee will vote and will choose one to take Janet's position, um, but we do have positions open frequently, so we will keep the other's application, and if something else comes up, and if you're still interested, then certainly we can move forward at that time. So thank you for being here. Next, we'll move on to the amenity reports. I'm gonna go out of order by one today. Um, Macy has a time constraint, so we're gonna have Macy go first just so she's not rushed towards the end at all. Macy, go ahead with Metfield. So Metfield overall looked good, um, nice and clean. I saw a few people working out at the clubhouse. 
Um, I spoke with Cindy behind the desk. I haven't seen her in forever and she looked great and um, welcomed me as always with warm greetings. Um, she said that no one had anything negative to say. The park looked good overall. The pickleball courts I noted were coming along nicely. It looked like the foundation was just recently poured. Um, I was not able to get to the pool due to the, the day that I went, it was so early in the morning, but I did see a worker was um, cleaning out the pool to get it ready for the day. Um, member interactions, I wasn't able to speak with anybody other than Cindy. Um, and areas for review, I have none. Everything looked great. So that's all I got. Thank you, Macy. All right, we'll go back in the order of the agenda, which brings Branchwood up first, and that would be mine. Overall condition, I was there on a Sunday afternoon, less activity than usual, and most of the people there were in the fitness center. There were a few out walking, one group playing pickleball, and two families at the playground. There was even a gentleman using the playground equipment as a workout tool, so it was kind of interesting. The water fountains near the pickleball courts are now working properly, and the grounds were in really good shape, especially considering the recent rain. I was out there after one of those rainstorms and it looked remarkably good. Areas for review, the windbreak on the back of pickleball court six has come free on the bottom right-hand corner. Um, it looks like just the tie snapped. There is a sharp piece of cut off fence post. So if you're looking at the pickleball courts and there's two great big lights on the right-hand side, the one furthest back, down near the base, there's a piece of fence post that's very jagged. I don't think anybody would get hurt on it. It's too far back. You wouldn't be back there, but a mower could hit it, so you might want to have someone look at that. It's in the ground, but it's sticking up out like that. Yeah, I don't know what it was. And then small, but just FYI, the weeds are starting to come up under that, your, your um, lining, your um, windbreak and they're leaning into the court, so it either needs to be weed whack or just sprayed with some killer so they go away. Um, it's just starting back behind court number six. Member interactions, I spoke to a gentleman, David. He had moved here from Missouri about two years ago to retire. Interesting note, they play indoor pickleball on the racquetball courts. He did say that the walls are challenging. Additional observations. The Drop the Gloves Cup, which will be referred to as the DTG Cup, is a two-round PDGA sanctioned tournament and it will take place at Branchwood on August 27th at 8.30 a.m. The disc golf competition benefits Drop the Glove Razorback Hockey Team broadcast crew. This is the first year for this annual event to be held at Branchwood. Also of interest, UDISC released its top five disc golf courses in each state based on millions of rankings in UDISC's golf course directory, the most comprehensive go disc golf course directory in existence, and Branchwood Disc Golf Course came in at number five. There are 163 courses in Arkansas. Woohoo! Am I allowed to do that? Woohoo! <laughs> Thought that was pretty cool, guys. All right, the next one is Loch Lomond, which also is mine. The same day, it was a late Sunday afternoon, it was not active at all. There were few people out walking, but rain was predicted for the afternoon, so I think everyone stayed home. The AstroTurf at the home plate is a trip hazard. The hole is pretty deep and it should be replaced. The spider webs in the ladies' restrooms are becoming unsightly. I did not check the men's, but I would assume you might have the same situation going on in there. And then just a note to keep an eye on the grass and the shaded area of the la large dog park is wearing down. It might need some straw until it can be receded when the weather improves. I spoke to Julie and Jim. They would like a bench on the walking path in the shaded area between the two dog parks. They realize there are benches in the enclosed area, but they prefer not to go in there and could use a break halfway around the trail. They did ask about the two ponds. Would there be a fence? They are concerned for children playing in the area, which just leads to my additional observation. The pond construction looks like it's coming along nicely and was wondering, could we get an update on some timeline on any, any points? 
now or, or when, when it's not? Okay. I'll just let you go on. I'll okay. I'll address it. All right. And then the last, the next one is Blowing Springs. Unfortunately, that is Kathleen Coglins, and I'm afraid she's not here today because of a family uh, death in the family, so please keep her in your thoughts. And there is no report for Blowing Springs this month. And finally, my last one, Tyree Park. I covered it for Janet. Overall condition, late Sunday afternoon, same day, the boat ramp was very active. There were actually like people trying to come in and out at the same time next to each other. Um, there were eight boat trailers in the parking lot. I spoke to a gentleman that was there from Oregon. He was with a family reunion, which in total had 30 people in town. They had all rented houses on the lake. They were going out on the water for the afternoon to all meet up. Areas for review. The steps on the ladder to the playground side were really covered in rocks, and next time we're out there, if we could just sweep those off. The picnic table behind the playground closest to the woods is really covered in mold, and I couldn't even rub it off, so I think it's going to need some bleach. There is an old weathered sign stating, dogs must be leashed, pick up after your pet. It's a bit redundant and not friendly, as there is a nice new one right next to it, which also has a supply of dog waste bags with it, so it's just a much better statement, and the other one could probably just go away next time. And there's a similar situation up by the pavilion. It's a bit of a walk. There's a sign up there, but no supplies. And so perhaps putting the same matching sign would be a good idea. I spoke to a young family that was out there. They had kids with them. They were fishing, swimming, and utilizing the playground equipment. They were not catching any fish. But they were having fun, and they had no suggestions or comments. And then under additional observations, just comparing Tyree to other similar parks like London or things like that, some things that I noted, there is not a fish cleaning station, no kayak storage, perhaps could use a kayak SUP launch, and there also is an old shuffleboard court out there that could be repurposed for something more contemporary. And then my last comment on this was, as I was driving home, I passed what I was not aware of, Granton Park. Um, and I'm curious why it's not an amenity for review. It has a boat launch, a dock, a fishing pier, picnic tables and grills, kayak storage, and a portable restroom. It was also very active, had at least boat, eight boat trailers in the lot. The fishing pier was in use, and there was a couple sitting there enjoying the view. That would be all I had. No comments? Okay. Then we will move on to Lake Avalon Park. Cindy? Okay. I was there this morning, and... Um just beautiful I, I just every time I go there after the weekend I'm impressed at how clean it is all the trash cans were empty no trash at the beach all the chairs are stacked up and the kayaks are stored properly I mean just I have general kudos to the the lifeguards I'm sure cleaning up and the, the maintenance cleaning up the the bathrooms were the best I've ever seen them you know after I assume heavy use after the weekend so um, I didn't have any uh, areas for review it all looked great there were people out there already it was like 8 30 this morning and there were people using the boat launch and fishing and um, there was a I spoke to the older lady who was there with her dogs and she said she normally takes them to the dog park but she was happy to have this park where she can park and be at the grass because she was having breathing problems or something so not having to walk far to play with her dogs um, Oh, I noticed the, the picnic table is there over on that grill where the grills are on the other side. So that finally made it there. So that's, that was nice. It's not, a, it's not a nice stainless metal one, but right. um, Something. Uh, it's what we can do for right now. Yep. It's what we can do for right now. Yep. It's not the nice expanded metal. But, um, you know, we've, uh, as we've taken those down, we've kept them in storage in case we needed them in yep. an emergency. So. Yep, so that was nice to have that back. And, um, oh, and then I was down by the boat launch. There's wildflowers or sunflowers that have been allowed to grow and seen them blow down. And there were just tons of butterflies and just happy, peaceful morning with butterflies. <laughs> it was good. Um, but Mary, I wanted to ask you, you mentioned a couple months ago about some boards that were loose on the dock. And I know you guys go there a Those lot. You fixed it. It looks great. <laughs> I was there yesterday. No okay. issues. All is where, well. Where is that that you go? Cause so, you know, um, it's like Avalon Dam. So, 
So you go to the dam? On the dam side. Okay. Yeah. So, so like honestly, the best this place. whole time until like two weeks ago, I did not even realize that there and was And your kids would there. love it. You know that, right? They have a huge swimming dock there. They can yeah. run and jump off. It's really amazing spot. And it's no more idea. private. It's like less crowded. Yeah. Well, I'll have to check that place out. Place to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's all I had. Thank you, Cindy. Appreciate it. Uh, Reardon Hall, Scott. So the day I went to Reardon Hall, it was actually pretty quiet, which is surprising. Um, no groups were there. There was about six or seven people working out, and there was three or four ladies in the dance hall doing some type of jazzercise, dance exercise. Um, other than that, there wasn't anybody else at Reardon Hall, so it was really pretty quiet. Um, over at the tennis facility, there were a couple of couples out on courts three and four playing tennis, but everything else was pretty much vacant. Um, don't blame the heat for that one probably. Um, Jake was pretty excited. He got uh, a new bench put over on courts five and six with an awning on it. So there's no fence on that side because the fence is real low. So that's why he got the special bench with the, uh, with the awning to keep, to keep people in the shade. It was pretty nice. Um, swimming pool was fairly lightly attended, uh, but then I was there in the morning. I wasn't really there in the afternoon, but quite a few people in the adults pool few kids over in the other pool um, but the lifeguard said it's been a very busy season they've had a lot of fun this year with everyone so that one's going to be going for a while um, went over to the park there was nobody at the park didn't see anybody there did notice I'll just cover the, the areas of interest um, there's a lot of deadfall over in the park I don't know if it was because of the rain or what's going on but just notice a lot of dead branches laying everywhere None on the equipment, but just in the rocks in general. Um, walked over to the golf course. There was nobody on the mini golf course. Um, surprisingly, the, the mini golf course looks really good for the heat. Um, another area for review there. With the heat, all the grass is dead. There are lots of brown spots, a lot of dead spots. I don't think there's any sprinklers or anything over there, but I did notice there is a, like a water pump spigot that maybe we could water, but in the lack of grass, it's it's all weeds now so you know, i'm thinking with all the golf courses we have around here maybe a little bit of grass seed a little bit of fertilizer in the fall get it rejuvenated might really make that amenity look a lot better than all the brown dead patches around the holes and that's uh that's all i got thank you scott next would be lake ann park and london park that would be mary all right so i went out there on saturday early in the morning um both of my parks looked fantastic as they always do um it looks like uh when i was at lake ann park there was a big party using the shelter so that was nice it was probably the second time i've seen that in the year i've been doing that one so i didn't want to go over and bother them i don't know what kind of meeting or little shindig they were having but there was probably like 20 or 30 people there at like nine o'clock in the morning um so that's really good but everything was really clean um, I went over to the dam side. It looks like that you still have it roped off. It looks like that the waterfalls down, you guys are filling those intrusion holes, I'm assuming. So that looked really good. The porta potty was clean. Um, so that was great. And then London Park, um, the cleaning station looked great, like immaculately great. There wasn't even flies around or anything like that. I know that we're working on that area when you first come in and it's like bumpy and stuff like that. So I feel like you guys are planning on ripping that out probably later in the season when it's not so busy. Yeah. That, that, that area is going to be patched with concrete, mm -hmm. which requires drying time. And we'd, we would rather do it in a season that's not so busy. That's what I figured. That's what yeah. I was telling my husband. He's like, they still haven't fixed it. And I was like, yeah, because it's high season, there's people who's going to want to bring their boats down there. So um, when I was at London Park, I ran into a POE member. He was playing fetch with his golden doodle. He said he likes the big open fields. So contrary to a couple weeks or a couple months ago when people were asking for parking lots, now people are asking for open fields. You know how that goes. Um, I did have member interaction on Facebook. Um, some people were wondering if it may be an option for us to do a like pullout part for kayaks um, for the Little Sugar for like to put in and pull out so that way they could actually go down the little sugar. Is that something that we could do? I'm working on something. Really? Okay, because that would be so cool because that's actually what's been a hindrance from us doing that is it's like, well, where do you park and where do you put your stuff in and pull out? So I'd like to hear more on that. That's all you're gonna get at this time because I haven't, I, I'm not, it's not fully baked. 
I don't want to overpromise, and um, I haven't made the board aware of what I'm working on. But I think that, okay, so from an outsider's perspective, who heard from other people and my perspective, I think it is an amazing idea, so. Mary, thank you. I'm smiling, but I'm totally smiling. Um, Chris, would you like to cover Tanyard, please? Yeah, Tanyard Creek today was average for busyness, but it was really warm and everything. There's nothing unusual to, to report there. I'm going to um, stay focused on that trail adjacencies we have and that trail erosion. So Rick, as soon as the weather gets uh, compatible for us, we can go out there together and, and, and take a look at how that might be tackled. Yeah, we, we can have a look at it. Uh, that, I believe what, what you're talking about is on our radar. Um, it's just um, timing. Sounds good. So, you know, like I said, there's nothing unusual going on out there. You know, we've got those, those projects that are on our list. And I got a note from Randy Hamm that I'll share. Uh, he's, he works with the volunteers out at Tanyard Creek. And uh, he says that they're off for the summer months, but they are going out there periodically, a couple folks to keep up with some of the trash and trimming of the foliage off the trails, weed eating, and pulling some of the poison ivy. He says they are behind on the informational sign replacement, due in large part to their inability to find the right kind of um, adhesive paper or whatnot to get that fixed. But they, um, that's a priority for them, so they're gonna continue working on that. They're waiting on a couple things on the project list. Uh, you, you probably have it, Rick, but he mentions the rock work in uh, Avalon Creek aimed at shoring up the eroding trail. Uh, the tractor work on the trail connecting the south end of the Dave Weimer Bridge to the top west end of the dam. And um, construction of two steel bench supports to replace the ones that were uh, destroyed when the over uh, look was removed from the waterfall. By the way, that looks so much better. I went down there this weekend, my niece is in from out of state, and I hadn't seen it for obvious reasons. I've not been hiking, so it was like my first hiking venture and it looks so much better without that outlook like it first of all everybody was going over into the waterfall anyway so i feel like it makes it safer for the kids and it just looks way better down there for the longest time we were trying to figure out how to fix it mm -hmm. rather than just get rid of it and getting rid of it was the better move yeah it's fantastic it's way better yeah and with that color compliment we'll end the report on tanyard there thanks chris uh the gun ranges matt Okay, so I went out on a Saturday and there were seven people shooting. Uh, four were shooting pistols, the other three were on the rifle range, which was about like last time, but there were people showing up. You know, some were leaving. Uh, everything looked great and clean again. It seems like it's in good shape. Where they shoot's in good shape. The grass is mowed, bathrooms are clean. So the shelter, what I, what I liked about it is there's buckets with uh, little brooms out there. So it looks like everybody cleans their casings up, which then makes it for a you know, trip-free walkway, and that both times I've went, it's been really good. Really, the only thing I had for the area for review was, so if you Google the, the gun range and it pops up, you just hit hours, and it says Wednesday and Friday is the only day it's open, which is the trap and skeet range. But see, the pistol range is open Tuesday through Sunday, and actually my first time to go do that inspection, I waited until Saturday, showed up the big sign told me it was open all the time and i was like oh, okay so that might be something i mean it could be easily fixed i would think but it might bring more people because i noticed one review one guy said great place to enjoy wednesday and friday so he may be in the same boat so uh member interactions i did speak with a father and son and and the dad takes his kid out there to teach him gun safety and teach him how to properly handle a firearm which i thought was real cool they use it for that one other additional observation would be there's an open house at the skeet and trap range on august 13th from 5 p.m to 7. uh so they have a lot of neat things going food prizes education and more i've only seen one email for the poa emails and it was on the very bottom i don't know if this might be something that sent an additional one out where it's at the top to kind of showcase it because it looks like it'll be real cool and i plan on attending and i think if more people know then more people would go Thank you very much. Yeah, I plan on going too. We have that um, boosted. It's moving up 
as it gets closer. So I, um, I know Greg was working on the Friday's e-newsletter, but I'll double check and make sure. But I'm pretty sure it's moved up moved to, down. yeah. OK. And so that was? You, uh, the, uh, the hours that were listed wrong was through Google? Is that what you, that what you said? Yeah, so when you pop up Google, you don't even have to go to the website. It just says hours, and when you click it down. Now, if you go to the website, you still got to go to Highlands. And so people may not navigate that far, which, like I said, I did in the first okay. time. I just seen hours and I went on. Okay. I, I'm 99% sure that we updated that. I'll double check. But um, Google, you have no power over Google. So it could take, honestly, it could take six months to a year before you see the update. But I will for sure make sure that we've made the request and that's been done. Thank you, Matt. And our last amenity review with the trails in the Greenway, Chris. Yes, so the Greenway that runs up from Blowing Springs up the Medfield, it's in fine shape. It's in high use, bikers, hikers, walkers, dog walkers. There's just that one pesky little gravel wash that keeps recurring over just past the attendant station where you enter the Blowing Springs Park, but that's no big deal. On the soft trails, there was a, a work day out on the um, Little Sugar side last Saturday, and uh, they were um, sponsored by the Northwest Arkansas Trailblazers, and they had 38 volunteers out there to kind of refresh and um, spruce up the trails. So the volunteer program is, is running very strong. In fact, I touch base uh, with the Fast Tap leader, and she says so far this year, 2,500 hours have been logged by volunteers to rake and move the weeds and uh, rake leaves away and, and clear rocks and just keep the trails operating nice and smoothly from, uh, from the volunteers' input perspective. So everything's looking good there. Now there is one area for review on the Greenway Trail that's kind of related to uh, Blowing Springs as well because the Greenway Trail goes over the park's access road two times. And I've noticed that occasionally there's cars going through there well above the posted speed limit of 15. I've seen that almost take a biker out because the second crossing is kind of blind. So you're coming across the access road where there's all kinds of foliage and you can't really see the cars too well. Uh, but anyway, I recommend because I really think a bunch of cars are going through there too fast is to just uh, rebuild our speed bumps that are in there, just get them up to standards and maybe, maybe a couple more are needed there because it's supposed to feel like a safe area uh, and you kind of depend on that to be in that area. So maybe the speed bumps will help. And that's it. I will talk to Mac about that. Um, we sometimes have challenges with speed bumps, and they're more knowledgeable on what can and can't be done. Um, I definitely appreciate um, a safety issue. Um, and yeah, it is unfortunate. Sometimes people get some pretty good speed going on there. So that was um, can be was a problem even before the Greenway was there. True that. Right. Yep. We could do what we could do though. That's it. Thank you, Chris. Okay, that concludes the amenities reports. Uh, the next item is the capital project recommendations. So what the committee did was we took the three items that Joan had suggested that she was looking to per pursue, and we also added some thoughts of our own. And then once we had a complete list, we ranked it amongst the team. And so I will read the order of the items and the ranking that the committee gave them. And Joan, I can send this to you so you don't have to write this down, because it's going to get a little lengthy in a minute. So for the capital, the number one was update Kingsdale Pool House. Number two, update Metfield Pool House. Number three, replace the Reardon Playground. Number four, Tanyard Creek Overflow Lot Trail Access. Number five, bike or skills park at Loch Lomond Recreation Complex to add youth amenities on that side of the city. Number six, indoor tennis court at Kingsdale by enclosing courts one and two. 
Number seven, at a playground at Blowing Springs for the young families that are visiting and camping and all the children running through the area. Number eight, add a container, additional container at Blowing Springs. Use it to sell souvenir apparel, mementos, and basic bicycle support items. This would be a great service and income for the POA. So those are the ones that we suggested as things to think through for capital projects. We came up with a couple smaller projects, just food for thought in the days that come. Add a kayak or SUP launch at Lake Aval Avalon, excuse me. Add the same to Lake Ann. Add a roadside sign identifying the Loch Lomond Recreation Complex. Finally, or not finally, there's two more categories. This one are class or camp recommendations. Again, not ranked. The last bucket was not ranked either. That was no order. A youth disc golf clinic. Conduct four one and a half hour sessions, ages 10 to 18, on basic skill developments to be held at Branchwood. Another idea, kids fishing and conservation class at the lakes. Hold it monthly on Fridays at 10 a.m. All kids are welcome, ages six and up. A guided kids mountain biking club. Hold it monthly on Fridays 5 p.m., ages 8 to 14, boys and girls combined. A POA family-sponsored bike ride, hold it monthly from the Metfield Connector end at the Gear Garden at 7 p.m. in the evenings. And the final one is a family Halloween event. Now, the last category, class recommendations to consider adding with the reared, reord, Reardon opening, I can speak to. Parent and child yoga, weekly at 10 a.m. for 30 minutes, infant to preschool. Sneakers in training, boom, a kid's version of silver sneakers, boom. Weekly, 4.30 p.m., 30 minutes, ages 6 to 12. A kid's Zumba, weekly, 5 o'clock, 30 minutes, ages 6 to 12. Kids Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu by, thank you, I can never say it. Toss Academy, weekly, 4.30, all ages. And finally, adults, low impact, Jiu-Jitsu, Jiu I still can't say it, <laughs> by Toss, thank you, there we go. Weekly, 6 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. So Joan, I'll send that to you. Those were just the thoughts that came up. Yes, sir. All right, we are making a change on the fly. We added another item to the agenda. Tom and I were gonna have him do this next month, but since we have two new applicants here today, it'd be good for them to hear this. So he's gonna do our monthly skills, our monthly committee training. So each year we do uh, training for our committee members. I don't think we did it last year because of COVID. Uh, so uh, we're going to be doing this for all JECs this week. Um, so I'm going to first start with the, you're going to see that this is very uh, governing documents oriented because the, the power and the authority and the duties of this committee derive from our governing documents. That's where it comes from. So the first one is policy 1.03. Now all these policies uh, are available on the POA's website. So if you would like to read them in a lot more detail, you're welcome to do so. But 1.3, uh, 1.03 talks about the association committees and specifically the JACs. And I'm gonna read just a couple of sections there. Composition and duties shall be directed by the board and in accordance with the stated policies. Uh, JACs will include golf, lakes, and recreation. So key words that I'm gonna pull out in accordance with stated policies, the duties and responsibilities of the committees are outlined in the POA's governing document. So we wanna stick to what is authorized by our policies and we don't wanna go outside of those parameters. All right, and here's the next one. So the, this is policy 1.04, which is specifically talking about JACs. Um, it is the duty of each committee to discuss, analyze, propose solutions for problems and opportunities within the area of concern and make recommendations to the management or board. 
And so two key words or phrases here is advisory. So a committee, the JAC Joint Advisory Committee, is your job is to advise, to recommend, point out, and so forth, but it is not your job to dictate, require, and so forth. Um, and then within your area of, of concern, you want to make sure that you stay within your area of concern. You don't want to stray into, um, hey, let's offer uh, golf lessons for the kids. It's not your area of concern. Okay, that's the golf committee's area. So you want to stay within your area. You don't want to merge and, and transfer over into another area. Stick within your area of responsibility. All right, this is still policy 1.04. So for committees, so we have uh, two com potential committee members. Uh, the nomination process, it starts at the committee level. So prospective uh, committee members are nominated by the committee. These nominations are then voted upon by the board. So it's a recommendation, an advisory. It goes to the board, and they ultimately vote on it to approve it. Uh, so assuming that the committee takes a vote today or at some point in the near future, then those recommendations go to the board for approval. Committee size is really determined by the JACs. Um, we, you can uh, have a larger or smaller committee uh, based upon what your needs are. You talked about potentially adding Grant and Park. Well, maybe we want another committee member. That's, that's acceptable. I mean, I don't want you to go too crazy. The table's only so big, and we don't want to have uh, uh, really long meetings, but you could expand the committee size if you felt that it made sense. Terms are for three years. Still on policy 1.04, liaisons. Uh, we have uh, uh, Jan Hagen behind me, and we have Jan Sims up on uh, um, Zoom, and uh, they are our liaisons. Uh, and the liaisons facilitate, uh, how am I doing? Facilitate communications between the board and the JECs. The liaisons do not require or demand or lead the meetings. They're there to function as a communication conduit, not to push forward an agenda or something like that. That's not their role. Um, the meetings uh, for the committees take place on a monthly basis, but the, the board gives a lot of latitude when it comes to the holidays. You see a lot of the committees will combine their, their November and December meetings into one. You're more than welcome to do that. Sometimes uh, the golf committee will take off January because there's snow on the ground. There's not a lot of golfing going on. So that's within the authority. But we, if you all of a sudden started having a lag of three or four months, that would probably be an issue. Quorum, you need to at least have a majority of your committee members here. Um, officers, each July, the committee will elect a chair, a vice chair, and a secretary. You guys did that last month. Um, uh, and member comments. We always want to make sure we allow member comments. It's limited to three minutes. Um, and it is what we normally do is we field all the comments all at one time from each person that comes up and then we respond all at one time at the end. Uh, what we were going to try and avoid is a back and forth debate where the three minutes becomes five becomes ten. Um, policy 6.02 is regarding uh, the official POA publications and release of information. Uh, the board shall, shall be responsible for all official association publications and social media. Uh, official is the key word there, is you are a member of the committee, you're not uh, speaking on officially on behalf of the board, so you have to be very careful. Um, we encourage people to say, you know, well, aren't you a member of the committee? Well, I'm speaking for myself, I'm not speaking for the committee, I think that's always a good thing. And when it comes to social media, I just, you know, be very careful, don't get into firefights, that's not, that's not who we are. That's not the image we want to portray. Um, if, if you are an active uh, Facebooker and you see in, uh, incorrect information, I don't have any problem if you state factual information, but be very careful uh, and don't get into the back and forth and name calling all that garbage. That, that's, that's not who we are. Um, 
Also, make sure that you post, if you are going to rebut a statement, that you are 100% certain you, got, you have the facts. You can always call or email me and say, hey, I saw something on Facebook. You know, um, I, I'm very careful not to uh, chase my tail when it comes to Facebook because uh, the false rumors are so, ac so, so frequent, it, it's, it be can, be, can become a, a waste of time. Other, uh, uh, JACs can uh, create a subcommittee uh, to work on projects if you wanted to, hey, we're thinking about, uh, you know, this specific issue, we'd like this subcommittee to work through it, that's great. Committee members um, uh, should always work together in a cooperative manner. You guys do a great job, just continue along that line. Uh, we have had issues in the past, not on this committee, but just want to be careful. Uh, committee meetings are recorded. These videos are archived. Be aware of what you are saying. Um, just be aware of that. We, we have cameras all over the place. Uh, and we have Chris in the back as our producer. Uh, and we don't, if someone says something uh, that they uh, regret, uh, I've had people come to me and say, hey, can we delete that? Nope, too late. Um, uh, committee meetings are open to the public, uh, open co to the community. We encourage people to come along and, and, want, and ask questions and interact. Uh, committee uh, meetings should commence on time. You did so today. Typically, we want to keep them w within an hour. Uh, and uh, each month, the committee chair or vice chair should come to the board meetings and report. Uh, or in the least send a summary uh, to Jessica and then I will report on behalf of the committee. Um, the, the board likes to see the committee uh, chair, likes to interact, what's going on, what is the, uh, you know, uh, uh, just be kept aware. Um, it, it's, a, uh, it's a mutual beneficial process to work together. Uh, budgeting, uh, so each year, the committee will submit a recommendation on key projects which should be considered for the coming budget uh, they should be submitted in order of importance. You've done that. Uh, and management team and the board will do our best to accommodate as many recommendations as possible. We can't make any guarantees. Uh, uh, for those who were on the committee back in, uh, say, uh, 19 and uh, 20, uh, when we were dealing with the, the um, uh, Trafalgar fire, uh, our budget was really nothing. Uh, and uh, we've been able to accommodate more uh, projects, but uh, we have to be very cognizant when it comes to cost and so forth. Um, and thank you. Volunteers are what uh, makes uh, our community great, uh, and we really appreciate your time and uh, your commitment, and you guys go out to all of the sites, and, and uh, you really help our team. You're the eyes and ears. Um, we have thousands of acres of uh, common property and it's uh, really impossible for us to see everything. So we really appreciate everything you guys do. Any questions? I have a question. So you have, say you have nine, oh. say you have nine committee members and you're looking to expand. What, how do you feel about keeping it odd for purposes of voting and so there's not ties? Um, rarely do, do, does a committee uh, vote on highly controversial issues. Um, uh, there is no, there's nothing in the policy that states that it must be an odd number. Uh, if the committee feels that they, they should have an odd number to avoid uh, um, a tie, uh, but usually the committees, it's, it's a little bit uh, more straightforward. So there is no requirement in our policy to have an odd number. Probably should have started with that. Go back to the comp policies. That's why we have them there. Okay, and then I'm going to give you my reports super quick. We are just very busy. Um, activity cards. Uh, last year uh, through the end of July, 12,059 compared to 13,700, up by uh, almost 1,700. Guest passes through the roof uh, from 9,000 uh, last year. Uh, this year, 12,800, an increase of 3,800. We are just busy, busy, busy. Uh, boat registrations, uh, 6,600 last year, 
7,100 this, this year. And golf rounds, um, now that the weather is starting to cooperate a little bit, uh, our year-to-date rounds were down just a little bit, but uh, we, the weather earlier in the year was not very cooperative. Now that the weather is helping us out, uh, we're definitely picking up a lot of rounds. So, um, uh, you know, years ago, remember, before COVID, we did about 135,000 rounds uh, of golf a year. And then with COVID and with the 2020 plan uh, kicking in, we went up to approximately 175,000. We were concerned that we were going to slide back down, and if anything, we're, we might actually add to that total this year. So we're just across the board very busy, and that's it. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Tom. Rick? Try to be even quicker. Um, so uh, the Lake Avalon drawdown continues. Tomorrow we're uh, hopefully completing work there, and we'll need a day, or excuse me, a week, for that to cure and we should be done uh, for that part of the process. Um, let's see, uh, the POA Rangers, we have 12 Rangers on duty this summer. They're all performing very well. Um, I actually have three celebrating success recipients that'll be uh, receiving their uh, awards at, at the next board meeting. Uh, they, um, routinely find new ways to to be uh, helpful to the uh, members of Bella Vista and I'm very proud of some of the real uh, uh, good work that they've done and and, uh, and actually in a couple instances pre uh, preventing uh, some really bad outcomes um, let's see uh, about 7700 contacts for the month of July that's up 500 from the month before and up 2,000 from the year before. So the guys are really getting out there and, and making contact with people. Uh, I did implement a new policy for, uh, in July. Um, we are uh, curtailing some of our midday lake patrols in the excessive heat. When we do go out, we're sending two rangers. Uh, and uh, we have purchased uh, coolers for each vehicle. Uh, and, we, and we keep water um, because we've had some incidents of, of heat exhaustion. And so uh, our, if you're dying of thirst, flag down a ranger, they've got water. Um, grounds maintenance, we're keeping up with all the facilities usage. Um, we uh, are seeking a variance with the city for the Lake Windsor dock installation. So that's got things delayed there just a little bit. We're spraying woody vegetation on the dams. So if you see uh, at this point, they're, they're just small, but uh, we're not allowed to have trees on our dams. So if you see dead trees on the dams, that's what that's uh, in regard to. I have reached out to the caretaker, uh, volunteer caretaker at the ball field to get me a list of items that he would like us to address. Um, so that'll be uh, coming, forthcoming. Um, and I, okay, so we got the, um, the fisheries and lakes department. Uh, we did notice, you guys did notice the construction going on at the, at the ponds, uh, that will continue. The rain's actually helping that process because we have to pack that soil. Uh, we stocked 5,000 channel catfish in Lake Avalon just the other week. Uh, there was a gentleman that is uh, a member of one of our bass clubs, and he caught what might be the largest catfish ever caught. I'll pass it around. Um, caught that on Saturday, about a 70 pound blue catfish. Um, and I will, we have had no lake fertilizations or uh, weed control spraying in the last month, so that's good news. And I'll let John talk about the upcoming event at the gun range. And you also asked about Granton. Did you want to address that? If, if you want to add Granton as a uh, site to be reviewed, that's absolutely acceptable. The, it's probably worthy of, of, of the, that. The Lakes Committee does inspect Granton. I'm correct in that, right? They, yeah, they do. But it, it doesn't hurt yeah. to have a second set of eyes. No. But they, it, it doesn't. It wouldn't hurt. It's, 
Uh, let's see. And also Google, yeah, we've we've attempted to get Google to correct that confusing bit of information several times. So we'll 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 get on it again because it's time to badger them again. And then also I remember I think it was last meeting, and I'm not sure if I covered it then or not. You talked about the gun racks. I'm going to seek to budget for new gun racks for next year. So hopefully those will all be repaired and in good shape. Uh, over at Trap and Skeet, unfortunately, it was slower year over year. Uh, we just had a really bad stroke of bad luck. Uh, this particular month it was hot, so we lost one shoot that way. Uh, ammunition still an issue uh, for trap and skeet and then also uh, we lost another shoot on the Saturday where we had storms so just nothing no good luck was happening over at trap and skeet um, but on the other side of the fence over at rifle pistol we were up 20 percent on attendance uh, which is pretty incredible with the heat and interestingly enough that is almost entirely made up of uh, activity card holders uh, so that's really good news uh, and then lastly, yep, we're going to have an open house event on Saturday, August 13th, this Saturday from 5 to 7, so come out and see the changes that we've made over at Trap and Skeet if you haven't already. Uh, we'll have our instructors and staff on hand, most of our staff, um, let's see, we're going to do some trap shoot exhibitions, one of the area high school teams is going to come in and, and show us how to shoot trap, and it's just going to be a good time, so everybody come out. That's all I got. Thank you, John. Joan? Thank you. Several updates. Um, Blowing Springs continues to be very busy, as many of you around this table have recognized. But the one thing that we're seeing that's a little different this summer because of the excessive heat, um, we're a little lower on tent camping than usual. So. That's an unfortunate um, thing about um, the heat. The good news is um, many of the other amenities have, uh, have picked up <laughs> any slack that might have come from the campground. Uh, the pools and the beach uh, have been very, very busy this summer. In fact, it was interesting when Scott mentioned it what didn't seem too busy. When we get a moment like that, we, we almost take a sigh of relief because um, people have really been enjoying the pools and the beach this summer. Um, and then to that end, uh, with school officially starting on the 15th, Metfield closes for the season uh, this Sunday, and the beach will be closed weekdays starting next Monday, but we will be open all uh, weekends. And then we remind our members that Kingsdale Pool, we work really hard, Jessica and the team, we work really hard to keep those pools open as long as we possibly can and uh, in many cases a month longer than many, many community pools. So we'll be open till mid-September, and what that means is during the week, uh, we don't have a lifeguard on stand, we do have a lifeguard on the property, and then weekends when we're busier, we have lifeguards on stands and, and fuller staff. Um, and uh, we are you know, allowing the adult pool and some of the homeschoolers and people that just you know, want to enjoy the summer a little longer and have that ability to enjoy that amenity. So we're, we're proud to do that. Um, we just finished another successful tennis camp and that bench that was mentioned, Scott, was actually donated. So we appreciate a couple of um, members who donated that. It was in honor of a fellow tennis player who had cancer. So that was um, a nice thing that they did. Um, working on the member resources building if you haven't heard member services has renamed um, their um, team to be member resources which is a fitting name for all that they do and all the information they share and uh, the rear and remodel so that process continues um, working on things such as sourcing and budgeting right now to see what uh, the actual cost for the various things will come in at um, and I want to give a compliment to Jess, and I'll throw it to her shortly. Um, you know, we've been extremely short-staffed, as many businesses have been uh, in the last year or two, and this summer was no different. Um, and we feel strongly that we've been able to c continue to serve our members in a strong way without missing a beat, even though it takes a toll on our staff working really hard 
Um, and this includes lifeguards who are out there in the heat of the day, um, people in maintenance that are out there working in this heat. So um, we just uh, appreciate our team for serving our members. The marina's been very busy. We rolled out a special after uh, July 4th and it was kind of the give back and also staycation theme where we reduced our prices on our rentals for members, not for guests, uh, during the weekdays when we're a little slower. And so that's been going well and appreciated. And the pavilions have been um, just through the roof with rentals too, people um, trying to get some shade and still enjoy their outdoor activities. And I'll just ask Jess if she has anything in particular to add. Not much, but Joan's being shy. If you go to the beach anytime before 10 o'clock, Joan is most likely the opener. <laughs> um, so kudos to her too. But yeah, there's been some, you know, we've worked really hard, but really it's the kids who have worked really hard and the, all the guys out there mowing um, constantly outside our maintenance guys. I don't know how they do it sometimes. So really good team and that's it thank you both for that and Joan thank you for reminding us another summer has just flown by <laughs> Judy you want to bring us home uh, hi Judy marketing and I don't think we've met I'm Matt. Matt nice to meet you Matt um, well as everybody else is if, if they're busy we're busy uh, it's a given um, we do have a new marketing manager, and that's really great. Um, we really have welcomed Ashley. We also have a new team member who is doing more on Facebook and Instagram, Hannah, and um, she's great. So um, that's helped out um, the other three of us on the team immensely. Um, I will um, uh, check again on the open house. I'm sure it was in the sporting update um, at the end of July, but I know that it will be up up in, um, in the news on uh, Friday. So um, otherwise, we're putting on the final touches on the Inside Magazine for fall. Um, it should go to print hopefully next week. And, um, and the beat goes on. So we're always here to serve. And um, we really appreciate our team members. Thank you for that. Any closing questions, thoughts? Yes, Scott. Joan, on the Kingsdale pool? Are you going to have the dog swim at the end of the year this year? Yeah, it's being planned for um, the. Yes. <laughs> um, is that one? It right now twenty um, fourth. It's a Saturday, um, and they use the Kingsdale Pavilion. And then, for those of you that don't know, Dogs Days of Summer. They come in and swim in the pool after the chemicals are out of the pool, and it's a fundraiser for them. And we've partnered with them for a number of years. They did take off with COVID, so yeah, they're being back. And the baby pool. Oh yeah, they get to the dogs that maybe are you know not as tall can go into the baby <laughs> pool. Yeah, but it's a it's if you if you're not a dog lover, you should stop by. It's a hilarious. Um, day but really fun thank you anybody else Marianne and Brian thank you so much for coming and your interest in the committee it's an involved community that makes things the best that they can be so we appreciate that if there's nothing else the next meeting is September 12th oh, for one last thing. So yes sir you want to hit the procedures for, for voting for new committee members um, for us uh, as homework Oh, okay, thank you. So, yeah, so I had sent y'all a note earlier today. If you would please send me your choice for the committee um, member to fill Janet's spot, I will tally those votes and then I will present them to the board for approval. Okay? Ne thank you, Chris. Next committee meeting, September 12th, 4 o'clock here in the boardroom. Thank you all. Have a good month. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>